Well, the international break is finally, finally over and we can really focus on getting back to normal, getting back to real proper football, real proper Saturday, Saturdays, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Sundays, whatever day games take place on these days, guys. It is really genuinely all about Rangers now until the end of the season for fixtures and semi-final pre-split. And then we obviously find out the split fixtures uh, once those final four league games have been played and four massive, massive league games upcoming for Glasgow Rangers, starting on Saturday against Hibernian at Ibrox. And, you know, it's going to be a game where Hibs are going to want some revenge. They're going to want to get back at us for that cup semi final, that cup quarter final where they feel they were unjustly treated by the referee with those two sendings off, even though they were both uh, Stonewall red cards. Nick Montgomery will have his team bang up for this game. I suppose the encouraging thing is, though, that uh, the players that went away on international duty, uh, with the exception, obviously, of Rid Van Yilmaz, have returned relatively injury-free and ready to go. I mean, we really genuinely cannot afford any more injuries uh, with the way things are at this moment in time. You know, you look at the um, you look at the whole situation around Cortez and Seymour and Danilo and, and so on and so forth and, and Dowell as well. You know, getting these guys back it is going to be, you know, massive, hopefully on the running. You know, having them back post-split will be uh, very, very, very obviously useful indeed. Um, you know, in terms of the players who have been away on international duty, uh, John Souter obviously has been away with Scotland. Um, he didn't really take part at all. He was a second half substitute in Holland in uh, Scotland's 4 0 defeat to the Netherlands. Um, he then obviously was not part of the game at all, didn't come on as a sub in the uh, Scotland's defeat to Northern Ireland at Hamden. So, you know, overall, John Stewart's going to come back relatively fresh and healthy. Uh, Rabbi Matonda obviously was away with Wales, who suffered an emotional roller coaster of a week with a 4-1 win in the Euro Championship qualifier semi-final, but then a heartbreaking 5-4 penalty defeat to Poland. Uh, Rabi was an unused sub in both of those games. So again, Rabi will return to uh, to Ockenhawi, uh pretty much refreshed. You know, the, guy, the fact the guy didn't take part at all. Yes, he would have been part of the training sessions, which obviously, you know, will keep his fitness up. Um, it, it will all help with his development. You, you kind of feel that maybe something around... Um, the fact that, you know, that he hasn't played a great deal of, of uh, football recently may have played a part in him not taking part at all in in, um, in, in those Wales clashes. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Rabi shortly. Uh, Ruben Yilmaz, obviously, look, he played 27 minutes, is injured, 7 to 10 days, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, going into that old firm game on the 7th of April. He hopefully, please be available for that game. We need him at left back. For definite. Um, Cyril Dessers was obviously with off with Nigeria. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Rangers don't even mention the miss. Strange that. Um, he did score a penalty um, in Nigeria's 2-1 victory over Ghana and then came on as a sub for Moses Simon uh, as they lost 2-0 to Mali. Uh, by far the star, though, of the international break was Fabio Silva for Portugal's under-21s, where he played up top. His movement was excellent. He really worked the, uh, the, the the defenses that he was up against. Not only scored goals, but created chances for others and looked very impressive up there. Um, I don't genuinely get the Fabio's not, not a forward kind of thing. He's not, yeah, he's not an out and out nine. I get that, but he is very much a, a centre forward in the kind of, you know, Liverpool, Bobby Firmino, Mo Salah, um, Cody Gakpo kind of number nine. You know, that not static number nine. I think, it's kind of a prehistoric attitude to kind of think we need to have a, a nine that just stands up there and is a nine. I think you do need in modern football more of a, a fluid approach to attacking. And I think Silver would definitely provide that. I personally would start Silver over Dessas every single day and twice on a Sunday. Um, you know, he, he scored against the Faroe Islands uh, for Portugal in, in Portugal's 4-0 win. He also scored um, against... Uh, Croatia's under-21s in Portugal's 5-1 win um, over a very strong Croatia under-21s team. Um, in terms of some more homegrown talent, Leon King, Adam Devine, who is on currently alone with, with, uh, with Motherwell, and Cole McKinnon, all featured 
for the Scotland under 21s. Uh, Scotland under 21s beat Kazakhstan under 21s 4 1 on Thursday. Uh, Leon King played the full 90 minutes. Uh, Adam Devine and Cole McKinnon came on as subs for Scott Gemmell's team. So, you know, we've got some. Some, it's decent though that these guys have all come back. They're not injured. They're available for selection. They're re- they're going to be ready to go on Saturday against Hibs. And you know, like I've emphasised a number of times on these videos, you, you know, we genuinely cannot afford any more injuries going forward. It really is a a last chance saloon when it comes to injuries, isn't it? You know, it is a case of the fact that we need to keep all this squad fully fit and ready to go. Now, look, we all know that second guessing uh, Philippe Clement um, at, in terms of his selections is 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 a, a tough one. You know, Philippe, uh, obviously, pre the uh, international break, uh, in the three games, he only made one change and that was injury in force, which was very unlike what Philippe normally does. He he likes to rotate his squad. He likes to move the squad around. He likes to keep every single player involved. Um, you know, I think a lot of that obviously was down to the intense nature of the fixtures over that period. So, you know, we get that. Now, obviously, his choices for the Hibernian game are severely limited by injury. You know, we will find out in his presser what the injury situation is. I'm sure that will be one of the primary topics of conversation, as it always seems to be whenever uh, our manager speaks to the media. So, you know, what... You know, we're, we're hoping for some positive news on Danilo, some ho- positive news on Seamus, some positive news on Ridvan, even possibly some positive news on Kieran Dowell as well. You know, the more players we get back for the running, the more the squad is strengthened, the better for the team. I mean, you know, the, the more lifts we can give this squad going forward for these final few games and everything, you know, I know we sit, currently sit second, but we have a game in hand. You know, everything is in our own hands. You know, we win out from here. We win the league. It's quite simple. There's nothing they can do about it. And I think... You know, personally, I think you, you look at it and there's kind of an arrogance there um, from them at this moment in time. There's an arrogance that they think the league's theirs, that they don't need to worry because, oh, you know what, Rangers will do their usual. They'll slip up, they'll blow it, they'll, they'll they'll fall apart because that's what Rangers normally do. But, you know, we need to prove that this is a different Rangers and that really does need to start on the 7th of April against them to go out and actually beat them to show that there's not that mental block, there's not that... Uh, that uh, situation where we we can't get over the line against them, which there has been in recent games. I mean, the only win in the last few games against them it came in that uh, uh, pointless end of season three uh, 0 victory at Ibrox that nothing was riding on it. The league was done, the game was over. You know, it, there was nothing actually riding on that fixture. So for me, it's so important we win that game. So important. A draw won't be good enough. It has to be a victory. Yes, we can probably take a draw at Parkhead. But at the end of the day, that first game at Ibrox on the 7th at Ibrox, we've got to get that victory. Got to be a victory. Just no other choices. Now, in terms of looking ahead to the Hibernian game, obviously we'll do that properly um, on uh, on Friday and Saturday as we move in towards the game and preview the game. I've had a little think, though, already about the type of team that Philippe Clement could pick, given his limited options, you know. And this is my first draft. Now, this could well change depending on what Philippe says in his presser. Uh, you know, we could have players back that we don't expect to have back. Or we, there could be players available. We don't know what the situation is in terms of that. And at the moment, it looks like a clean bill of health on the injury front. So that's positive, apart from the Ridvan situation uh, coming back from internationals. So, you know, it could all change. But this is my initial feelings on a team to face Hibernian. So... Obviously, Jack Butland is in goal. Uh, who else can you pick? Back four, you know, James Tavernier, Connor Goldson, John Souter, three quarters of what has been, a, a, you know, have been a, done a very good job over the last couple of games. Uh, so for me, you're looking at those three will start. I, you know, I don't, as, as well as Leon has done, as big Leon has done this season, John Souter has done nothing wrong. You know, he has been probably our best central defender since the winter break. So I would go with Souter alongside Goldson. You know, Barisic is probably going to come in, um, whatever you feel on that. You know my feelings on Bourne. I'm not going to dwell on them particularly. Um, you know, Bourne probably will start against Hibs. Probably will be just OK against Hibs. It is only Hibs, after all. Famous last words, I know. But hopefully Ridvan, please God, let Ridvan be back for Celtic. I don't want to see Bourne Barisic's name on the team sheet against Celtic at Ibrox. Uh, Diamande and Lundstrom in front of the back four. Uh, Mo Diamande, who turned down the international call for Ghana, uh, saying that he's going to be focused on getting into the Ivory Coast team. Well done, Mo. Uh, I think start in front of the back four is that double pivot. You know, Ryan Jack, I think he's still injured. Um, 
Tom Lawrence, I suppose, is an option there, but I just think that Diamande has kind of made that spot his own. Uh, then the three behind the striker, I'm going to go with Rabi on the left, because uh, him and Bourne are linked quite well at the start of the season when Bourne and him played. I think we need to give Rabi an opportunity. I know there's a lot of fans don't like Rabi Matondo. I know there's a lot of fans don't rate him, but, you know, he started the season very well. I think a lot of his recent form has been affected by his injuries. So hopefully with him getting a rest, kind of, well, kind of a rest, a training rest, kind of it, away with Wales, um, hopefully he comes back, he's stronger, he gets that start. Even if he only has 45 minutes and then we bring on Tom Lawrence or we bring on McCausland if he's fit or whoever, you know, it gives an option there. Todd Cantwell for me has to start. Surely Todd is back to full fitness now after the international break. Obviously he wasn't away with any national team. He'd have been working on his personal fitness uh, at Ock and Howie. So hopefully Todd will be back. You know, Todd, for me, is going to be absolutely vital in this running. His his skill, his guile, his talent, him chipping in with goals from midfield, which we'll certainly need. I think you know he he is going to have a critical role to play, particularly against them on the seventh. Um, Dujon Sterling on the right side, he's back. So Sterling for me starts on the right wing with the fact that McCausland's not fit. Cortez is out, Seamus out. Matondo's better on the left than the right. I think that's also another reason why we've seen perhaps not seen the best of Rabi. When he's come on, he's not really a right winger. He's more, he likes to come from that left-hand side. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about that's why we did see the best of him last season when Kent was playing there. Matondo was pushed to the right. And for me, I'm going with Fabio Silva up top. I know a lot of you don't like that. I just think that Dessas is too much of a risk. The guy is just too much of a risk. Um, plus, he's better off the bench anyway. Silva's movement is, is first class. I think he'll cause the, the Hibs defence a whole host of problems. There's some big units in that Hibs defence that don't like to be moved around. That's Silva's game. His movement is excellent. Him and Todd Cantwell have a very good relationship on the field. The way they link and interchange it is pretty good. So that's how I would line up for the Hibs game. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. That's just my, this it could change, obviously, depending on what Philippe says in his presser. So guys, drop me a comment down below. What would you play? How would you start uh, against Hibs? Difficult one with all the injuries, I know. It would be great, wouldn't it, to have a full squad to pick from, to have Seaman, to have Cortez. I mean, could you imagine... And have Danilo. Could you imagine going on into the 7th of April with a fully fit squad with an attacking foursome of Cortez right, Seema left, Cantwell 10, Danilo up front? That would scare the crap out of them. It really would. Um, that would be a pretty ferocious team. I honestly think, you know, if we had a fully fit squad and we, we selected something like Butland, Tav, Goldson, Suter, Ridvan, Diamande, Lundstrom, Cortez, Cantwell, um, Seema, and Danilo, that would be a team that would tear them a new one. I really genuinely think that. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, really value your comments. I have been a bit behind on the comments recently as I've not been feeling too great. Uh, a lot of personal issues going on at the moment. Um, you know, it's just, it's just a lot going on, guys, in, in the family at the moment. Uh, a lot of issues, but trying to keep the content coming out. That's why there haven't been as many lives recently, but trying to keep going with the daily content, keep talking Rangers, good escape. Um, also, you know, a bit worried about the channel as well. We've lost 10, 10 or 12 subs in the last couple of weeks, last week or so. I don't know why people are up subbing. You know, it's not great, guys. Uh, we want to grow this channel. We want to try and get to 6K by the end of the season. Thank you so much, though, though, for those of you who have watched, have continued to subscribe, have continued to support. Your support has been amazing and has been most welcome. Thank you for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation, guys. Please obviously smash the sub if you're not subscribed to the channel. And also, you know what? There's two things I always ask of you on the way out. Two favours, two requests. Number one is to smash the like. And number two is to remember always, we are the people.